I don't think that you can expect President Obama uh, to select a conservative jurist. So what you hope that the president has done with this nomination is to select somebody who is going to be a consensus builder. And that is so important for the court. Over the last few years, we've seen a number of opinions which either have been five to four opinions or where there have been multiple opinions, concurring and dissenting opinions. Uh, and what this has meant is that there have been a variety of legal reasoning employed by members of the court sometimes to reach the same conclusion. This doesn't provide as much guidance as it might to lower court, and it isn't a clear articulation to the American people of what the view of the court is on a particular legal issue. It used to be a tradition in the court that for its most important opinions, unanimity was sought, and it would be nice to return to that. I think that Kagan's experience at Dean and Harvard Law School trying to seek consensus among members of a faculty who had many diverse views was excellent preparation for seeking consensus among members of the court. And it doesn't hurt as well that she has a really fabulous sense of humor. She's extremely intelligent and will be re well respected amongst her Supreme Court colleagues. I think that the president got it just right when he said that Kagan is going to be a consensus builder. And uh, she was terrific as a consensus builder, as the dean of Harvard Law School. Academic politics uh, are about as sharp elbowed as they can get. And Kagan had a fabulous reputation among students and faculty at Harvard Law School. Uh, she did some things that had not been done before. And in terms of improving the quality of life for students, she also brought into the law school a number of faculty members who were more conservative, uh, which was somewhat unusual. Uh, at that time, the, uh, the law schools tend to be the bastions of a very liberal group of professors, and uh, it was a fairly bold move for her to bring conservative faculty members into the Harvard Law School. She comes to uh, the nomination uh, process without judicial experience, uh, and that will probably be the most significant thing that will be utilized by people who are opposing the nomination. Uh, she isn't uh, alone in lacking judicial experience. Uh, the last two uh, Supreme Court picks who lacked judicial experience were Lewis Powell and later Chief Justice Rehnquist, who were both nominated in 1972. And certainly, uh, the Chief Justice Rehnquist showed himself to be not only brilliant as a jurist, but also a great leader of the court. You can assess her performance in, uh, in two uh, oral arguments that she's done in front of the court. Uh, she uh, performed quite well in both of those. In the Citizens United case, uh, she was unsuccessful in the position that she took, but frequently gifted advocates are unsuccessful simply because of the nature of the position that they're taking and where the court is on a particular issue. In the absence of record as a judge, they are going to be asking her a lot of questions about her views, perhaps more questions than they would ask uh, a candidate for the office who had uh, an extensive judicial record. And you can bet that even before this nomination was announced, there are a lot of uh, judiciary staff members who have been working overtime to find every uh, scrap of writing that uh, Solicitor General Kagan has ever done. I think we're going to hear people argue both things, that it will move the court to the left and that it will move the court to the right. Um, and I wouldn't take a position on that. Um, I don't think that it's clear in which direction it's going to move the court. I think that you're going to see that she's going to be very independent in her thinking uh, and that she will uh, treat the cases as they come before her based on the facts and the law, which is what we hope to see in the justice.